welcome back to learning partner so in this video we are going to see interceptor implementation with the login means login page then interceptor getting the token from the api and sending the token along with the api so whole how do we implement interceptor with the angular 17 since angular 17 is released some of the things are changed now right so whatever you may have implemented before angular 17 the implementation is changed now in case of angular 17 and Again, so many changes are there, right? Now, in the previous video, I have explained now how do we implement login page in the Angular 17. The video link, you will find it in the description, but I will explain the code one more time. So you can see this is the login page. By default, I get the login page. If I don't have anything in the URL, still I'm getting the login page, right? Now, once we do the login, in the log on the login button, we have integrated the API. So this is a, one of the email ID I'm passing. Let's try the wrong password first. If I click on login, you can see I'm getting the error like username and password is wrong. Now let's enter the correct password. That is like 113322 on click of login. You can see login success message is coming and it, it is redirecting to the dashboard page. Now, right after if I click on the logout button, I'm again coming back to the login page. Now let me just show you the code what we have done. So first thing like, I have created three components, dashboard, layout, and the login. Layout is just a component which we are going to need once user is logged in and in the layout page, we are going to have that nav bar, right? Along with the log off and all the navigation link. Then in the app component, we don't have anything, just the router outlet. Now the main part is routing. So this is the routing. See, this is the first route, which is default route. So if you can see over here, the path is empty. Means if we don't have in the U if we don't have anything in the URL, it will redirect to the login, right? So login component it will redirect to the login path and login component will load. So if we are not logged in, app component will act as a parent component. So this router outlet will be activated, right? Now, and as I told you, like after login, we will have layout as a parent component and there we will have a nav bar and again we will have a router outlet so that's why we have one more path the path is empty but the component is layout component and for this layout component we have children so whatever the components you are going to have after the login that all needs to be part of the children of this component right like this now in the login component so simply I have just created a class with the properties I need in my particular object. Then I have created the object with login object. This object I have binded with the form with ng models. To use ng model in the login component.ts, we have to use the forms model. Then uh, in constructor, I have created a HTTP object because we have to make the API call router also because we are going to navigate. Now on click of login, we have make this API call HTTP.post. This is the URL and we have to send the object. Once we get the login, we are showing the alert box and we are successfully navigating to the dashboard. This is what I have done in the first video. Now, next part of this, let me just show you the network call once more time. Once we hit the API, we are getting a token. Okay. So 113322. Now just pay attention to the network tab. Once we click on the login, let's continue. In the login API response, we are getting a token. So in data, you can see in token property, we are getting a token. Now this is nothing but a JWT token, which I'm generating in the API side that I'm returning back to the front end. Now, so these are some APIs like gate all user. This is the API which we cannot execute unless we pass the token. So currently you can see it is saying unauthorized or not one. Let's try this in the another tab also. Right. So this it is saying like this page not working HTTP pair 401. 401 means basically unauthorized. Now, so to access this API, we need to pass the token along with the request. Right. Now. So we have stored, we, uh, up on the API call, we are getting the response, right? In the response, we are getting the token. That token we need to store into the local storage. So let's do that code. So once we get the response, this is the if block is getting going to execute. So here, local storage, 
dot set item and I'm going to store the token. So let's say Angular 17 token. This is my key. And the value I have to store is res dot data dot. Let's check the API response. Inside token property, I have the token. So in the local storage, I'm storing my token in this property name, Angular 17 token. So let's just save this and let's check if we are successfully storing the token or not. Let's log off. Let's enter the password. Currently, let's check the local storage in the application, local storage. Let's clear this also. Now, if I click on login, login is success. Now, we, here in the local storage, you can see we have successfully stored the token. Now, next step is like we have to implement the interceptor. Let's go to the Angular project. I have created a service folder. In this service folder, I will be opening a new terminal. And here we have to create the interceptor. So, ng generate interceptor and let's name my interceptor as custom enter so this will create two file one is the interceptor file and another is a testing file so let's run it right so you can see over here it has created two file let's expand that so in Angular 17, you get interceptor something like this. This is nothing but an arrow function, right? Pre uh, before Angular 17, you used to get something like it, something else. But from now on, in Angular 17, you would get pipe also, will you will get like this. Everything will get changed. So this is the basic interceptor we get. Now, if you remember in Angular, before Angular versions also, whenever we create intercept, we used to register that in our app module. But now we don't have the app module. So still we have to register it, right? Because interceptor is like, what do we say? This should be applicable on the global level. All the API calls are going to be through the interceptor. So we have appconfig.ts. App so here we have to register that interceptor. So that will be again provide HTTP client. And inside that, with interceptor. And we have to provide. Now, here with provide interceptor, you can see an array is there. Right? As we can have many, as many as interceptor we wish. Right? So that's why we have to pass array over here inside the round bracket. And here we need to pass our interceptor name. Our interceptor name is custom interceptor. So let's copy it. Let's paste it over here. Let's add it import. So two things we have done. With this command, we have created interceptor. After interceptor is created, we have to register that to our app config.ts. Instead of app module, we have app config. So here we have to register that. Like this. In provide HTTP client and with interceptor and inside array, we have to pass our interceptor name and the import also. Next thing, let's create another service which will be responsible to get uh, uh, like uh, not required to create the service but in dashboard component let's try to get the api call data so here constructor the api call which is restricted unless you pass the token you won't get the data so here private http colon http client On any time implementing because on the page load I'm going to make the API call so implement on in it ng on in it let's create a separate function that will be get all users we have not done anything code to send the token but for first I need to show you like how uh, API will throw the error if we don't pass the token. So this dot HTTP dot gate. Let's copy the URL what we have from the swagger. This is my URL. So let's paste it over here. Let's subscribe to the response. Now 
Now this function we have to call on the page load. So that's ng all in it. So this dot like this. And whatever the response we get, that we need to store it also, right? So let users colon any. So whatever the response we get, that will that we will store it over here. Users is equal to res dot data. So normally we write this only, but else cache block also should be there. So error because now the cache block will be error block will be necessary. So here I am just going to show the error with API error from API. Right. So let's just see if we are making this API call on the dashboard page, what is the error uh, we get? So you can see error from API. So if we go to the uh, network call, you can see 401. API is proper, API URL is proper, but it is saying unauthorized because we haven't sent the token, JWT token, we have, we have to send because this API is restricted. If we send the API token, then only it will get us the data. Otherwise, it will say unauthorized. Now, so we have Im implemented the interceptor. Let's just try to add a debugger over here and let's say if uh, the interceptor is working fine or not. Now, after the component, let me just add a debugger over here also so that you can see the flow, how it works. Console, yeah, so it is disabled. Let's reload one more time. So now you can see the first debugger which is activated is from dashboard component. Once I continue it from here, see it is going to the interceptor means it, our interceptor is working properly. So interceptor has is having two parameter request, whatever the request we have created from the component that is we have got over here URL and everything. And the next is nothing but an object. Now here we need to modify the incoming request and we have to push some headers into it. So let's create that headers into custom interceptor. Let me just zoom a little bit. Now, in request, this is nothing but an incoming request. Whatever the request we have created from the component. Now that request we need to modify. So how do we do that? So we just need to create another variable. First, uh, we need to read the local storage variable. So let's read the token. My token is equal to local storage dot get item. So while storing the token into uh, local storage, we have we have stored that into a particular key. Let's get that key. So this was my key. So this key we are going to put it over here. So by this, we are reading the token, whatever we have in my local storage. Once we do the login, we get the token, that token we are storing. So that only token we are reading. After reading the token, we need to clone the request. So constant clone request is equal to request dot clone. Whatever the request in, means what currently the HTTP object, right? Whatever the URL, parameter, object, whatever it is there, we are just cloning that. And while cloning, we have to just add new headers to it. So set headers is the method we have to use. So in set headers, again, object and the property is authorization. Authorization. And value we have to send is bearer token because my API token is bearer. If you are working on an actual industry project or in a company, you need to ask your API team like what, what kind of a token you have. They will tell you like it is a bearer token or something else or identity. So you need to ask your API team in which property you need to send the token that you need to ask them. Just in my, my API, I have to send the token in the authorization along with the bearer. So in my, to my token variable, I have got the token. So that I will intercept, that I have to pass it over here. So I will use template literal over here. So let's get the field sign. 
and here I have to use my token, right? Now, whatever the request I have got, using that I have created a new clone request. And while, now instead of the original request what we have got, now we have to execute the newly clone request. So here we have to pass the newly clone request. So let now with this code, with every request after the login, we are going to send the API. So let's save and check. Now we should get the API response. Continue. Now here, our code will work. So first is like from local storage, we are reading the data. So you can see here we have got the token, whatever we have stored. Now we have modified our request, whatever we have got. Let's continue. Now in network tab, you can see we have got 200 means. Let's let me show you the tokens where the token was there. So in request headers, here authorization, B error and the token, whatever the token we have got that we have sent. So now we have got the response. Now, if I remove this token from my local storage and let's refresh one more time. Now token is not there. So again, you will get unauthorized error because token is not present over here. See, token is not present. So this is the token based authentication. Whenever you do the login, you get the token. That token, you uh, store it either in a session storage, local storage or in cookie. But after login API, Whatever the API call you make, in all the API call, you need to send the token. So that's why we implement the interceptor. And in interceptor, we write, we pass the headers into the request. So that is the use of interceptor. So many, uh, an interceptor like uh, in a single point, you can show all the errors also. Uh, mock data also, you can create. Right, so so many advantages of there in in case of using interceptor. This was this video was mainly focused to how to use that in Angular 70. You might already know how you you have done it with the previous version, but this is the newly implementation what we have to do. So after creating interceptor, this code was almost same. Just in app config, you need to register an interceptor like this. That's it with the current video. I hope you are liking liking my videos. Please do like and subscribe.